Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas, and today we're going to be cutting a piece of PVC pipe for the start of our algae panel. And I'm actually using a scrap piece of PVC. This is two inch. For the algae panel, we used an inch and a half. I'm using a scrap piece because I actually did the cutting of that PVC about six months ago, and I misplaced the video file somewhere on my hard drive. So we're going to be redoing this from scratch. Anytime you cut PVC or CPVC, you want to make sure that you wear a respirator mask and some eye protection. This is a really good setup. These are like 14 bucks at Harbor Freight. This is like four bucks at Harbor Freight. So you can get them anywhere you want, but it's the cheapest place I found. What we're gonna be doing with this is mounting a two by four to this to give us a nice flat surface. You can free cut PVC, but it can be a little tricky. You rotate it back and forth. You might catch the blade and have a really bad kickback. So for safety reasons, it's a good idea to mount it to a two by four. Now we're gonna be drilling a small hole in the end on each of these. You can seal this hole back up if you don't have a pressure system. If you are gonna be using this for something that's gonna hold pressure, then what you're gonna do is just use a slightly longer piece of PVC and you're gonna cut that off. So the blade that I'm using is a standard ripping blade. It's a little bit finer than the uh, 20 tooth ripping blade. I believe it's 24 tooth, um, but that works fine. You can use a special blade for cutting acrylic or for cutting plastics if you want to, but I found that this works good. The trick to it is to not raise your blade up too high. You want to have it just be enough to grab it because what's that, what that'll do is that'll just rip just what you need out of the PVC and you won't have this big ugly cut on the end which you'll see I actually had a big ugly cut on the end of the ones that we work on in the video but it also if it does kick back you're just kicking back a little bit of the blade it is the fastest part of the blade but it won't have the torque that the deeper part of the blade has so you won't get that really sharp kick you might get a little bit but if you do it right nothing will happen if this is nice and straight you'll be fine so we're gonna get started on this so the 2x4 extends past our project it's a good idea to do that on both sides, that way it gives you a little bit of working room. You want to take this and uh, you can clamp it down. What I'm using is the rail of the saw to actually hold it in place and it's coming over here and the 2 by 4 is there. So you line it up, the 2 inch the curb comes up higher here, on the 1.5 inch PVC it actually comes right almost to the center of the 2 by 4 so it works a lot better. So I'm going to hold this in place and just drill a slight hole. Now we know our spot. There's a little hole in the PVC. So we want this hole to be as perfect to level as possible. And you can see that I'm gonna scoot this forward a little bit. I want this to be nice and balanced on a good surface. You probably should use something a little bit more stable than a table saw. This is a one and a quarter inch drywall screw. You can use whatever you want, but I like these because they don't grab as ruggedly as the coarse drywall screws. So now that that one's mounted firmly in place, so those are together pretty good. All you want to do is make sure, there's going to be a little bit of play, but it's real minor. So now we have a nice flat work face to work with. So you want your blade to be high enough to just, just cut into the PVC. The tooth is just above it. I'd probably go down just a little bit more. You want it to be high enough so if you wobble a little bit like this, you don't have an area that didn't get cut out. But you don't want it all the way up. So that should give us a pretty good cut right there. I'll go a little bit higher. You also want to mark your PVC where you want the panel to, you want it to be the width of the panel. So I'm just going to like guess mark this right here, but you basically take it around, put a mark all the way around on both spots. This way you can see what you're doing. And then what you do is, you know the blade's going to end right here, so you just come up on your saw, put a little mark there for right now. You can put a piece of tape if you don't want to draw on your table saw. This is going to let you know that when you come here, you're going to want to start right about here and you're going to want to finish on the other side in about the same place. We're going to have to do multiple cuts for this because we need to get it wider. The panel is just a little bit more than 5 eighths of an inch thick. If you're doing the core class, that's usually just one or two fine cuts with the blade and it slides right in there. You don't want to go too wide because then you're going to have gobs of silicone. The tighter you want it to 
just fit in there snugly, but not be so tight that you have to really jam it. So we're gonna get geared up for this. And I usually start this really slow by just setting it on the blade. That's, if you have a couple, like someone helping you, they can hold it in place and you can raise the blade into place. Just wanna make sure that you don't go too aggressive with this because it, it will kick back on you. So make sure nobody's behind you if that does happen. I mean, I've cut a lot of this this way and it doesn't seem to do anything. So my saw is currently unplugged and I've, I've got my marks there. Once you know where you're at, you can write that down, get your measurement here for the different types of uh, material that you're using, and then just when you do the second piece, because you're probably going to need two for just about any project, start there, and then you know your finish points. This one on this two inch is like a little bit more than three quarters. To show you with the test cut how accurate I was, you can see that we went right on that black mark. So that's good. So three quarters for two inches, perfect. What, what didn't happen was the blade didn't extend far enough this way. So what we're going to do is just go past the line. We're going to move the line up on each side. Okay, to just show you really quick, this is not the ruler of choice for this because it's got a heavy end over there. But we are... And I'm doing holding the camera at the same time. We are one and a quarter inches short. So all you do is measure one and a quarter and draw a, a line further that way. One thing that PVC does is as you cut it, it tends to want to close back together and pinch. This is not good if your blade's up really high because that will grab your blade, melt the PVC around it, and you will have, uh, it, depending on how strong your saw is, this saw is not super strong, so it'll just kick the breaker. But if you have like an industrial saw, that's not a good thing because it'll kick it back at you like a rocket. So um, that's common that that happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to move our guide now and just gradually work over that direction so we want to move our PVC this direction so what you want to do is open your we were at three quarters here for the two inch and I'm gonna move it over just enough and we're gonna go at it again <clears throat> So what I did was a test cut and it wasn't enough so I'm gonna nudge it over a little bit more this is kind of a little bit more of an art than science, so actually it's both. So now the pinch has gone away. One thing you're going to notice that I do, sometimes when I cut two by fours, I will walk away from the saw, go to the other side. You don't want to leave PVC on the saw because it can actually heat up. And you just don't want to do it. So what you do is you just Take it off and switch sides. So what I did was I went way too far on that second cut. So I was incorrect about that. You don't want to go all the way to the other one. You want to go, obviously, uh, an inch and a half short of that, probably. So I went too far by an inch and a half exactly. So if you're... For what we're doing, you can plug that with silicone and then the resin. If you're doing a pressure thing or something that's going to, uh, you don't want to do that. So we're going to go an inch and a half short here. Again, you can use tape so you don't mark up your saw. So 
So you will have two, you should have two marks on your saw that show you where to start and where to stop. Uh, the one nearest me is wrong. So if you had tape, you'd just take that one off. So those are your starting and stopping points. So now we should be able to go. I'm gonna go ahead and move it over another eighth of an inch and finish this up. So with this one you can see this was the cut that I went too far on. All these other ones are hitting pretty perfect here and we're doing really good here. The one thing that I did this time was I got too aggressive on my move over. So what you want to do is not go as far. If you get that, take a small carpet knife and cut that out now. Don't try to get it with the saw because those sharp pieces can actually pop loose and fly down the tube at you. You don't want that, so you don't want any large shards of PVC flying at you. So you can see there is our marks that we have, we're right down the middle of them. It's nice and straight all the way down, much better than what I actually used. This was the boo-boo. You can see that this is about what you're going to expect with the edge. So you're going to fill this in with silicone so it's not going to be a problem, but you want to get it as close as you can. You want to get it as close as you can and I'm going to measure this. And we are right at 5 8. So when you have it here, it's a good idea to see if it slides on your panel nice and tight. If it doesn't, then you can just add one more small cut. You can't add material back, but you sure can cut it away. So that's a good idea to do. Um, this is the first step. The next part of the video, I'm going to be showing you the resins and that sort of thing. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.